Hey everybody, it's Amanda. We're back in the kitchen today making more fish and today it's Parmesan crusted whiting. You guys, I am not kidding you. I am loving fish recipes and I don't know what took me so long to make a bunch of these because honestly, they are so simple and my favorite thing about fish recipes is the lack of stress in terms of whether or not it is thawed. If something is not thawed and it's fish, you can do it so quickly. So the other day I mentioned that when I have tilapia, I throw a little hot water in it and then uh, in a couple minutes it's ready. So technically you're supposed to use cold water. With tilapia, I don't think it really matters that much because it's so thin and it's gonna thaw so quickly that it doesn't really make a difference. You're not gonna get any like bacteria or growth or anything. And as long as you cook your fish thoroughly, you're good. But today we're using whiting. And I feel like whiting is a fish that maybe people aren't that familiar with. So let me just show you. The thing about the tilapia, if I may say, tilapia comes in a bag, but then within the bag, the tilapia is also in another bag. Now whiting, let me show you the box the whiting came in. Whiting comes in a box like this, or at least this one did. And it's wrapped in a bag like this. And it's like not one that you can really, you know, put hot water in, nor would you want to. Because whiting's a little bit thicker of a fish. It has the skin on it. So the way that I do it is I take a bowl like this one and I put cold water in it and you can see there is the whiting and it's thawed. Now again, fish is really simple because if you come home at the end of a night and you don't have anything thawed, by the time you put this in some cold water, you probably wanna give it about 10, 15 minutes and it'll be thawed enough for you to use and that'll give you time to do all the prep work here, which probably isn't even gonna take 10, 15 minutes, I'll be honest with you. But this is still a very, very quick and simple dish, even if it comes from frozen, you guys. I'm not even kidding you. So let's talk about the ingredients that you need and the super simple way to prepare this fish. Okay, you guys, here's my whiting and I'm standing in the light so you can't see it. I have three pieces of whiting here. It's like half a pound, okay? I'm actually going to make a half recipe today but in the description box, you will find a recipe for a whole pound of whiting or any other similar fish. I'll give you some options down there in the description box if you want to, you know, if you got it like haddock or something else that you want to use. I've used this with haddock, I've used it with tilapia and of course the whiting and it's all delicious, but I'm sure you could use other fish if you were inclined. So anyway, first thing over here, I have some garlic that I've already minced and I have some softened butter. And then I have Parmesan cayenne pepper, which you need for like every fish recipe, a little lemon juice, salt and pepper, some basics, and breadcrumbs, and that is it, you guys, except, you know, maybe a little oil to oil your pan. But, I mean, you are not going to beat this. You know what, I'm actually gonna throw in also, just for color, a little parsley. We'll throw a little in there, just because I think it'll make it pretty. So anyway, that being said, let me show you how you put this together. So easy, you will not believe it. So the first thing we wanna do is throw a little oil in here. You know, this is a Pampered Chef pan. You probably don't need it, but I really want my fish, oh, that's my oven, it's preheated. I want my fish to not stick at all. <laughs> I really do not wanna clean sticky fish off this pan. So that being said, I'm gonna wash my hands. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and take the haddock and lay it in there. You know, some people are a little freaked out by fish that has the skin on it. And my friend, by the way, I said haddock, this is whiting. Some people are freaked out by the fish that has the skin on it, don't be. It's going to stay in the pan or on the bottom of your plate. It is not something that you have to worry about being in your mouth. So we're just gonna make sure that when we put our fish in, in the pan, that we put it with the skin side down. Okay, so there that is. And I'm gonna take one of these paper pat towels and pat it dry, but I'm gonna wash my hands first. soaking in water so it is very moist. 
and we want to try to get as much moisture off as possible. There we go. There we go. She's really getting dry now. Okay, now to our mix. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and throw this garlic right on in there. You know, I'm one of those cooks that so I use my hands clearly for everything. So, all right, then we are going to add our breadcrumbs. And when we add these breadcrumbs for my, and this of course, remember is a half recipe, I'm gonna add one third a cup of breadcrumbs. If you were doing a full recipe, like I said, down in the description box, you would use two thirds, okay? But we're gonna use one third, this is a two third measure and I'm filling it halfway. It actually has a halfway measure in it on the inside. So we're gonna throw that in there. And then we're gonna add our Parmesan. All right, in the same measuring cup. If you are making a regular recipe, you need one third cup Parmesan, but I'm making a half recipe, so I need a half of a third. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use the same one and eyeball that half of a third because I don't have a measuring cup for a half of a third cup, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, so there's that. Then we're gonna take our, let's do salt and pepper. So we're gonna do half a teaspoon of salt. That's a quarter teaspoon measure, so I'm gonna do two of those. And then I'm going to do a quarter teaspoon pepper. I love having these little measuring spoons for these small measures. They're perfect. Then we're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of cayenne, which actually I might even do an eighth because Rick's doing this and he can't handle a lot of cayenne. Um, but if you like spicy, just go, go, go with the recipe. Try the recipe first and then you can add extra if you want. And you know what, I'm throwing in some parsley, so we're just gonna do like a half cup of parsley. Or excuse me, a half cup. Huh, half teaspoon of parsley. Just cause it gives it that nice little green that looks so good on a white fish, you know what I'm saying? And look at that. That's all of the ingredients. All right, so now here's what we wanna do. We wanna just stir it up. Make sure you break apart those chunkies. And as soon as we get it stirred up, we're gonna do something kind of, kind of special. I'm gonna take a tablespoon of butter and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here, that softened butter, and I'm just gonna break it up in this mix. Now this is what you would normally use a pastry blender for if you were like making biscuits. Did you see my biscuit recipe? Um, but we're just gonna break it up into little crumbs. And that way you have the butter incorporated throughout. Okay. All right, now here is the greatest part. We're just gonna go press this right on top of our whiting. Remember our whiting over here? We're gonna take our little mixture I'm gonna sprinkle it on top at first. We're gonna try to get it completely covered. There we go. We're gonna use all of it. Do not waste any of this good stuff, okay? It's gonna bake, it's gonna get crispy, it's gonna be amazing. Try to make sure it like, see these side edges? Pat it in there. Make sure you get these tips too, okay? All right, there we go. Now we're pressing it just to make sure it stays good. Okay, so now we're gonna move it to the oven. All right, so the oven has already been preheated to 425. We're gonna put this in for about 15, 20 minutes. Okay, so while we're waiting our 20 minutes, this is your other reminder. And I, you guys, I think this is gonna be, if not your final day, almost your final day, March 27th is the last day to take advantage of the Butcher Box sale where you get two pounds of free salmon in every box for an entire year. That's 24 pounds of free salmon. It is a tremendous deal, and I wanna make sure you guys know about it. If you're thinking about jumping on Butcher Box, 
Now's a really great time. And I hope these fish recipes have been encouraging you to try more fish. ButcherBox has some really great seafood. So keep an eye out there for it if that's something you're interested in. It's hard to find good quality seafood that's ethical, that's something that you can trust. And they have a really great place for it. I love their seafood. So anyway, that is that. I'm going to wait for this to cook, clean up these little bit of dishes, and I'll see you in just a second. You guys, we're just gonna like check it. Oh yeah, see that flake? I just, I stick my fork in and it just comes up in a flake. Right, right immediately, look at that. Can you, oh, you can't see it because my fork is there, look at this. See, it's just like a big flake and immediately comes up off that skin. That's when you know it's ready. All right, let's go make a plate. Guys, look at that. Is that not amazing? If you are a mom buying your kids fish sticks, this is what you need to do instead. It was so easy, right? This, like if you're buying TV dinners, what? Real potatoes, real peas, real fish, homemade. Took me like 20 minutes, like literally no time at all. Like no excuse. And let me tell you something, I'm gonna taste it. You will not, this is so much better. So much better unbelievably better than any kind of fish stick you could ever get for real. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna take another bite. When I was little, I used to get fish sticks. And as an adult, I had these memories, like fish sticks were so amazing. And then I tried one. I was like, this is not amazing. This is amazing. This is grown up fish, but crusty and delicious. You wanna try this for real. So there you go. Recipe in the description box make sure you try it make sure you try it this is amazing and remember i said about the skin on the bottom skin is still on the bottom i'm telling you you just dig into it and look it flakes look it'll just come right off and the skin is still on the bottom intact nothing to worry about nothing to feel icky about if it's if it, you've cooked it right it's going to come off it's going to be great perfect anyway all right well that's it don't forget Last time, I'm gonna remind you to check out the Butcher Box sale. That link is also, the affiliate link is in my description box. Go check that out and get in on this deal. You guys need more fish in your life, you do. All right, I'm gonna eat my meal. You all have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.